that you love me, so I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Say but not nice soft, you get that understood. Uh. God got me doing things I never would. I, 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 I be going places that they never said I could. Yeah. I just spent some time with God that's fitness. Yeah. Run up on the devil with a quickness. Yeah. Cast these devils out, I got a hit list. Do the right thing, cause I can't destroy my witness. Yeah. Devil speaking lies, I just dismiss it. R- r- riding on the way, now don't you miss it. I'm out here and I'm about my father's business. Yeah. My, my, my joy contagious, like I got a sickness. Two stepping in my blessings, like right now. No losses, just lessons when I go out. I'm feeling good, like I should when I leave the house. I'm acting up and they think I need a timeout. Welcome, everybody, to the Kingdom Fam Open Mic Poetry Night. This is the second one that I am doing. The first one was The Art of Melanin. Some of you may have been here for that. It was actually very excellent, a very excellent turnout. I want to start doing this more often um, I, by popular request. Last time, it was, it was a great turnout. So I definitely want to do this more. I want to do an in-person one. I'm just, stuff is opening back up, but I just want to wait a while, see how things go. So I can't wait to do one in person because I miss seeing everybody, but I'm glad that stuff is more open than it was. Even when I did the Art of Melanin, wasn't nothing really open. So Zoom is a platform where I can have everybody, even people from different states. So that's the amazing part about it. But... I'm glad to have everybody here. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for the poets, especially because you make this work. So I can't do anything without all of you. And thank you for those who are here for the first time and weren't even there for Art Melanin. Ashley, I know you had just had a baby. So, <laughs> so you aren't there for the first one, but thank you for being here for this one. Just to go over some rules, which I know everybody doesn't really need rules. We're all pretty respectful on this platform. But be respectful when another poet is performing. Please mute your microphone. And please do not talk when someone else is talking because that's rude. Be kind. Do not judge anyone's poetry unless it is kind and encouraging feedback. Everyone does not have the same style and everyone's art is beautiful. Please no profanity. My pastor will be popping in here, so I don't want anybody throwing around any F-bombs or anything. Um, So out of respect, please, no foul language. And most of all, enjoy yourselves. This is a safe place for yourself. Everyone just enjoy the art. And other than that, so I ask everybody to please bring two poems just in case. Um, What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have everybody go like a first round, everybody just perform their poems. It's no time limit because I don't like putting pressure on people. I know nobody's gonna have like a 10 minute poem. So (laughs) So, um, just perform your first poem. I'm gonna have everybody go. And then after that, we should have time for a second poem. If we have more time than anybody that I don't have listed as a poet, if you feel encouraged or something, then you could go do your poem. I like poetry, so I'm interested in everybody's poetry. Other than that, if you guys don't know me, my name is Beauty and Bars is my poet name, but my name is Shy. And I have been doing poetry forever. I started writing poetry when I was five years old. The first poem I wrote was for a Martin Luther King celebration. It's kind of wacky, but that's when I discovered I had the, the art of poetry within me. Um, and I've been writing ever since. It's easier for me to write from a personal space, something I'm going through. Uh, I usually could put myself in other people's shoes and I'll write a poem and they'll be like, wow, you went through that? But no, I haven't, but I know how to express the feelings that others feel as well. So I am 
coming out with a clothing line called Kingdom Creations, which I just launched. I have two books on Amazon. One is called Heaven Soundtrack. One is called Hell's Lyrics. And I also do a YouTube segment every Saturday called Soul Water Saturday. So, and I have four kids. <laughs> so I'm pretty busy, which I'm sure all of us are. We got to keep ourselves busy during everything that's going on. So I will be the first poet, of course, because I want to start it off. And this poem that I wrote, I wrote it because I feel like it's about a mother. It's called The Essence of a Mother. And I wrote it because, of course, I'm a mother and, and my children are young. My oldest is seven. And then my youngest is three. <laughs> so at times, I just feel like my children don't appreciate who I am as a mother, of course, they don't know how to appreciate it because they're young. But at times it just, it feels really lonely because I just want somebody to, you know, see me sometimes. And it's like, my children are like, you're my slave. <laughs> do what I need you to do. That's how I feel at times. So um, it, was, it was easy for me to write from that place in my heart. So as I said, this poem is called The Essence of a Mother. And here we go. What is a mother? A natural lover, gentle as a dove, the incubator, life creator, one who sheds her blood. The essence of a mother stands within her heart. She makes sure everyone is happy as she falls apart. The glue that holds the house together, she deserves the crown. No matter what problems arise, she always stands her ground provides a womb to nest her offspring until it's time for birth. But yet the world may overlook her and forget her worth. She may hide behind a smile when things are not all right. Though she's worth more than rubies, sometimes she dims her light. She showers her children with love without it in return. But raising them to know their value is her main concern. Some nights she soaks her pillow Someone understand that she gives out all she has with nothing coming in. At times she feels alone and forced to be strong, treats her loved ones with respect, though they do her wrong. What is the essence of a mother? Love in the purest form. When the world is dark and cold, her arms will keep you warm. Her presence is as tender as a gloomy day, always to be remembered and she'll never fade. Sacrificial even when she doesn't have to be. And of all the lovely children, God chose her for me. She's a fighter, pure survivor, solid through the pain. When her spirit leaves her body, life won't be the same. She will stand in front of bullets so you won't get hurt. She oftentimes is taken for granted and treated like dirt. She'll hold the world on her shoulders to give you relief. She'll take on all your burdens when your body's weak. She will nurse you to life while causing her own death. She will breathe life into you while taking her last breath. If you have your mother here, you have the finest jewel and you should treat her like a treasure on a pedestal. Don't shame your mother if you love her. Do not break her heart because when she says goodbye, you will fall apart. <laughs> so yeah when I wrote that poem I came from a real personal space I mean you know Mother's Day just passed and with my own mother I don't know why I love the heck out of that woman but she felt unappreciated so me and my husband went all out for her this Mother's Day and she really she really enjoyed it and appreciated it and it just made me think of growing up how I took her for granted to be honest I got on her last nerve <laughs> growing up because she was the only one there. My father wasn't. And then now I look at my own children, even though I have my husband here, it's just like, gosh, you know, everything that they do to me, I did to my mom. So <laughs> I get it, but it's, it still hurts at times just to feel like your children don't appreciate you. But um, I switched up two people in the order, just to let you guys know, because a uh, Shayla Soraya, it's her birthday weekend. So I wanted to get her out a little earlier. So a uh, Shayla, 
Soraya will actually be the next poet. I appreciate you. I appreciate Kingdom Tears. I just uh, want to thank God for this awesome opportunity. Um, I want to thank all the other um, all the other poets that's on here. I'm just honored to be a number. Thank you so much for changing up the order. I just I appreciate you. I appreciate you so much. You didn't have to, but you did. So that's love. That's all love. So and I love that poem that you just spoke on. You are an awesome mom. You, like even just your your marriage. I tell you how much how I love seeing you and your, your husband the way you work off to work together and even just putting together this kingdom tears for other poets to come together in unity. So I appreciate this opportunity and the poem that I'm going to speak on today. It is called Grace. Hi. It's called Grace. Good to see you. It is called Grace. It's the first poem that I ever put together. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so God told me to uh, put this one together. I'll hit you up, okay? Right. So God told me to go ahead and say this one. I'm outside the hair store, y'all. I'm doing hair on my birthday weekend. <laughs> I just see somebody I didn't. Okay, it's done. It's called Grace. It go like this. I'm done with settling for less when I serve a God who's able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that I could ever ask or think in just a blink of an eye. Yet I sit here and I ask myself why? Why me and why not her when he already told me he would never give me more than I can dare and still I dare. He already told me he would never give me more than I can bear and still I dare. Dare to ask why? Why is life so hard and why life just can't be easier when Jesus Christ Never ask why he had to die on the cross for my sins. Oh Lord, where have I been? My child, where have you been? I, I've been pretending that everything's fine and because it's more comfortable, I'd rather stay blind. Blind to the fact that although I know I'm doing wrong, it's cool because their life sings the same song. We party to the break of dawn, sex, weed and popping bottles. That's all I picked up from my role models. So now I fit in. He kicked down the door and we both went in. Called me his right of God, but I swore he had wings because when the cop showed up, he knew how to fly. Now it's my turn and God's asking me why. Why do you insist on chasing after other gods when you know it's a lie? Sin creeps in slowly, then you begin to die, but not physically, spiritually. So now you're spiritually deaf and spiritually unaware that Satan desires to sift you as weak, leaving you feeling deceived leaving you feeling defeated and weak? Nonsense, my child. Your troubles are small. I said I'd never leave you nor forsake you, so I'm here to catch you when you fall. I'm in the business of raising people from the dead. Just ask Jesus Christ, because the color all over his body was red. I'm God and I reign absolute supreme. Just let my word be the dope and you be the fiend. My blessings, they'll rest over you. You'll see what I mean. Become my witnesses. Too important to be sick, so I'll take away your sicknesses. Become my witnesses. Too important to be sick, so I'll take away your sicknesses. Listen, just keep pressing and stay in the race. Worst come to worst, I'll bless you with my grace. Where would I be if not for your grace covering me? Through every season, where would I be if not for your grace? You came to my rescue, and I want to thank you for your grace. The last part was not my song, but it's, it's the poem called Grace. So I wanted to add that on because we all, we move forward by grace alone, not by our work. So, amen. That's all I got. All right, girl, you did that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love how you perform your poetry. Then you threw your little song in there and you look cute. Girl, you did. <laughs> girl, stop it. That's... <laughs> All right, so next up will be Shima. And do, I believe do, you mind, do you mind if I just tell Shayla that like, that spoke directly to me? Says that was fire. That was fire. That was fire. I know that was nothing but the kingdom speaking. That was nothing but the Holy Spirit. 
when he gave that to you, when he gave that to you, you delivered it the right, you delivered it. I mean, oh my gosh. And just like Beauty and Bar said, when you speak, you just, oh my gosh, you were meant for this. You were meant for this. Thank you for being here. Definitely. That's definitely her ministry. All right. So next up is Shima. And I know he's here because I've seen him. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, this hey. evening, my name is Shema. Um, from Canada. Everybody. Uh, my first poem is untitled, but I'll just begin. Hear me, hear me. I understand that life can be so, so busy. And I understand that at times your plate is so full that it's making you dizzy. But what you need to hear has always been clear. I want to tell you a story about a king that should make everyone cheer. So stop and just listen. As I tell you about the Jesus Christ, our savior risen. Do you know the wages of sin is death? No, not just physical, but spiritual. The cost of our sins, an eternity of flight, of pain and punishment under hellfire's light. No more rest, no more repentance, just eternity to regret receiving this sentence. Listen, it is to all I say, I am no different. We ran a tab that we can never repay, a stain so stuck that should always have been there to stay. We each owe a debt so high that we should be forever lost. But Christ came and paid our cross. He only took that cross. It was for us that he, that he suffered and died. It is for us that he received that loss. Then on the third day, he rose again, showing death who's boss. So stop and just listen. I'm telling you the story of the one called Jesus Christ, the son of God, the one who paid our freedom's price. It is by him that we can be saved. Yes, even this day. And all you need to receive this undeserved kindness is faith. So stop and just listen. To preach the gospel of peace is my mission. What I hope to achieve is to plant a seed and let you know that the way into heaven is not through deed. So I cry out for all who would hear, repent and believe the gospel, the kingdom of God is near. Only those with the sins washed for the blood of Christ have nothing to fear. Stop and just listen. God is love, yes, but God has wrath. Save for those who made sin their bath, for those who turned away from him and left the path. So please listen to what I have to say. It is us who turned away. Sin has led us astray, and it is us who are to blame. So now I pray that you all may receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this day. Because it's not too late, but it soon will be. For tomorrow is not promised, and that is plain to see. Any day could be our last. At any time, we could die in our sin and stand in line to be judged by the living God and punished for our crimes. So stop and just listen. Seek Jesus while he may still be found. Seek his face while grace still may yet still abound. We are the lost and we have been found. And only by faith in him will we be safe and sound. So choose this day. While there is still a day called today to receive the salvation that Jesus Christ offers. Choose this day to believe in his name and be washed of our shame. Choose today to escape the eternal flames of hell by receiving your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. That was amazing. That spoke to me like a lot because sometimes we get in positions where we really need to hear that lately I have been going through some things where I haven't been feeling as high as I usually do and that was just encouragement for me so I thank you so much for sharing that that was amazing Up next, we have Sanja Stucky. Greetings, greetings from the Motor City. How is everybody doing this evening? 
We are doing amazing. Great, great. Um, my name is Sonia, and I'm kind of a late bloomer. Uh, I had a da daughter that was a poet, and I just started writing again after about 20-something years. I have my first book of poetry coming out, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's called, in this, the piece I'm doing is the name of the book. It's called Encounters of the Prophetic Kind. By happenstance, we take one glance. We open the book and just by chance, words explode from scribal pens, releasing ruach into the lives of men, poems and stages laid and pages laden with words anointed by spiritual sages who pen the plight of sin and its wages, cutting asunder with heavenly swords. They lift up Jesus with one accord, slaying lives and standing bold, rightly dividing, led by spirit of truth, building the body to bear much fruit, pointing the masses to the line of scrimmage, hoping to lead just one to become his image. Words encrypted, encrypted on the hearts of men, releasing the captives from lives of sin, all of this with the stroke of our pens. Heaven's dewdrops fall from liquid fountains. They scream revelation into our ears, answering the sound of our silent tears, frees us from our uttermost fears. His words bring light to dark sayings. His words bring faith to the failing. His words unravel mysteries. His words, heaven's heavy artillery, casting down lies and wicked imaginations, destroy demonic dominions. His word delivers from damnation. The scribal nation of this final hour will release his works with authority and power through poems and pens, pages and st stages, chat rooms and classes, social media blogs, podcast debates and dialogues, panel discussions, network anchors on media stations, magazines and books. Everywhere we look, Jesus be the hook that we play on repeat. An encounter with him, we can't scroll past or delete. The prophetic voice will be topping the charts releasing rappers and artists who will create from his heart. They will herald the kingdom in the song and the dance. They are the pie pipers of the kingdom's advance. They will speak of his greatness and the people will yearn. Their noise will be heard. Even the prodigal sons will return. Holy encounters in places unfounded, leaving the, rigid, the religious stupefied and dumbfounded. The revelation, this revolution is of the divine, revival, restoration, and renewal of minds. For these are encounters of the prophetic kind. Yes, that was amazing. I love the metaphors that you used in that poem. That was really Thank beautiful. Thank you. All right, for our next poll, we have Nocturnal. Hello. What up, Dota, all the Detroiters in the house? My hometown. Um, thank you for having me here. I missed the last one, so I feel fortunate I get to join in on this one. And uh, just amazing poets already, so I know I'm in good company. Like, I'm just really excited to be here. Um, so I'm going to share this next one. <clears throat> Y'all hear me all right? Okay. They're gonna have to kill me to silence me. That's the way it's gotta be. Cause I'll be damned if I see a brother hanging from another tree. That is why I seek to dismantle white supremacy and I'm not sorry if that hurts your sensibilities. You see, my eyes have seen too much not to use these abilities. These rhymes and these melodies break them from their ill-gotten tranquility. Because I'm no longer soothed by a false sense of history. And I'm no longer naive to the culpability. And I'm no longer trying to placate for the sake of civility, because I get it. Most people don't want to know plausible deniability. They seek protection, ignorance, and hide under a cloak of gullibility, but let's face it, white privilege is not that much of a mystery. Not when you're the one living with the hostility, skin tone treated like an abnormality gets you shot over a formality, your child robbed of stability all due to the fragility of another man's ego. But 
That's what the policy equals. When the cops are trained, the enemy is the people. They can murder, rob, subjugate, and do it all legal, and then seek salvation in the steeple. It is times like that that the cathedral reeks of the medieval, but don't get me wrong, because religion's not evil not less used to enslave the minds of the feeble. White nationalists missing Jesus. Where did he go? He got lost in a fake image, skin white as snow. Did they not know they are more blind than the beggar on the road to Jericho? And if they saw him on the streets, would they even know Emmanuel? Or would they hate him for his brown skin and look at him like an animal? Shouted, Black Lives Matter, he's no longer infallible. Cops shot him in the back, Fox News reports he's a radical. Business of incarceration goes on for the venture capital, while the private prison system eating through black bodies like a cannibal. But you want me to tone it down, make it more palatable. As if to say, their lives don't matter because my fragility is more valuable. But injustice anywhere is a threat to injustice everywhere, so everywhere I'm in pursuit. I'm on a mission to break this system built to erode the confidence of the youth. And if that trick is pulled, influenced by skin tone, then well, Ain't that the hard truth? And if I can't tell it in these rhymes, while your ears lend the time, if I'm not willing to try and look you all in the eye, then what is the use? Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> You've always been an amazing poet. That's what I loved about even coming to your events when you invited me. Your messages always speak volume. I love that. That was amazing. Okay, next up we have Chelsea. Hi everybody. I'm a poet from Port Richie, Florida. And this is from my debut collection, Sticks and Stones, which is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And it's called Out of the Woods. Tired of not seeing the forest for the trees when it comes to you. I would cut down every tree to get to you, but you would only call it wasted paper. I tell everyone you are my world, the sun, the moon, all while diminishing my own star in order to keep you shining. Why do I hold on when you leave me standing in the cold with nothing to cover me but a single feather? Loving you is tough, lust and leather that doesn't withstand the weather. My skin sweats and sticks to you uncomfortably. Cubic zirconium when I wanted a diamond ring on my left hand. A green remnant reminds me that all that glitters isn't gold. To have and to hold, nothing holding me but fear and unbelief. Not even a prayer and sacrifice can save me. Religious ritual, no faith. I hold your picture in my hands so hard I bleed. But you have no interest in phlebotomy or me. It's you I idolize. Yet all you ever do is cut me down to size. Loving you is no prize. And frankly, my dear, I'm tired of all the wasted time. Oh, I love that. You said it was from your your book? Yes. My debut collection, Six and Stones. Okay, so make sure that you um, put that in the comments because I love to support everybody's books and just their social media and their art and everything. So everybody that has a book or any social media, make sure to put it in the chat so that I can keep up with everybody. Thank you so much, Chelsea. I love that. No problem. Thank you for having me. Of course. Ashley. Hello, everyone. So I'm Ashley. I go by Ashley Speaks. Um, I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, the poem I'm going to speak on today um, is my latest poem. And I don't know about anyone else, but if you ever have found yourself in a season where you went through a storm, but God picked you up, dusted you off and made you better than ever, this poem should speak to you and I hope you enjoy it. It's called Restored. They say, blessed are the beautiful, though they never talk about the broken. 
So what are we to believe? That we're damaged goods, too shattered to be considered worthy of the blessings God has promised we will receive? Or do we hang on to his every word? Believing his divine power has given us everything that we need. That we're not required to go to him perfect. We're just required to go. Come to me. Undress yourself from shame, for it does not suit you. Stop hiding and unmask yourself. Allow me to show you how your pain is useful. You are purposeful. And in the middle of your aching, if you let me, I will prove to you that bruised heels do heal, that hearts can be mended, and strength, strength in me, shall be replenished. All I ask is that you come to me. Do not be misled or stray away, for you will not have to wait a year, a month, not even a day. Change is not on the way. Change is here with me. Stay so that I may return you to your rightful position. Lost but now found, you are no longer missing. Never again will you listen to the enemy's whispers telling you that your current situation is your final destination. Moving forward, when I send you, you will speak of my name out loud. Bold, confident, proud. Your surrender is what I was waiting for. Lies you will trust no more. Walk. Walking in your truth being reinstated, rebuilt, upgraded, better than before. My precious son, my darling daughter, my masterpiece. You are what I now call restored. To God be the glory. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and you can get my book, As She Speaks, on Amazon. I'll put that in the comments, too. Thank you so much, Ashley Speaks, for that. That spoke to me, of course, because I feel like I'm going through one of those seasons right now. Uh, you know, you have those high moments and then you have the valleys. So that definitely spoke to me. It was just like the Lord talking to me saying, I'm here. Where are you at? You know, <laughs> so I thank you for delivering that. Okay, let's see. Next up is Joey Scribbles. Hello, everyone. My name is Joey Scribbles. Um, I live here in Phoenix. I'll be reading a poem off my phone here. So I'll be, you know, looking at the camera probably. Uh, it's called Slave Souls, just a little throwaway I uh, always have in this phone. So I'll just go on to reading it. 24 seven, their minds revolve around the what ifs, what could have been and they should, and, and they, I should have done this. People I know who live every day sulking of how life could all be so different if they would have taken an initiative on one single action, wishing that life was like a back to the future movie and they could go back in time to change their present. Everyone is given a few opportunities to elevate their status in life, whatever that may be. But those opportunities are passed over like a plate of veggies at a kid's table, good for you, but always overlooked. I won't lie like I am not the same person because I have one foot on the plantation of regret but I'm more Frederick Douglass than some house Negro. And I will not sit idly by while the time of the present washes over me while I'm thinking of past currents that done already hit my shore. That I cannot do. I will continue to look forward, although there will be times I will look back, but it would only push me further to continue on. That's it, little short little piece. Okay, thank you so much for that, Joey. You look like, are you in the car? Yeah, I'm in the car. <laughs> well, thank you for still being here. Yeah. Okay, for my next point, we have Monifa. Okay, good evening, everyone. I am Monifa. So I have been writing poems, especially since 2019, when suddenly I lost my mom 
So that pun that you started out with beauty and bowers, I could definitely, <laughs> I could definitely identify with the whole motherhood process and the part that you said when mother is gone, it will certainly tear you apart. Because I I know for sure that feeling. So let me go ahead and pull up mine here. One second. Okay. My poem is entitled, My Faith. My faith lies in the master of the storm. I will forever trust him to sustain and keep me super calm. My faith will no longer be shaken by ifs, buts, or maybe, because I'm confident that my Lord is always with me. He promises to protect me from the snares and noisome pestilence. In God, I'll forever trust. He is my rock, my shield, my oxygen. To sum it up, he's my overall existence. My faith was never this profound. I too used to worry. Found in love with doubts and fear, I'd walk around. But for the past few years, my faith has been really tested. Intentionally, in God, my belief I've invested. Over the cliff, all tattered and torn, I had no choice but to let go and to my savior turn. I'll forever cling to my savior. He's my only hope. Since mother's been gone, hmm, my faith in God has given me the strength to carry on. My faith, my faith, my faith is in God, the master of the storm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Monique, for, for that. I love that. I love how you perform your poetry, especially the facial expressions, girl. You be serious about what you be saying. That's what I love about it. <laughs> you be speaking from that personal place. I love it. Thank you so much for being here again. I feel the support, girl. I love it. <laughs> then we will continue. Next, we have Sister Tawana. Hi, my name is Tawana. And um, I've been doing poetry since I was in about the seventh grade. Um, I began writing poems as a fast little girl to my boyfriend. So. <laughs> Um, and now I write a lot of poems about God and I write um, a lot of poems to my husband and to my children. So the name of the poem that I'm going to be doing today um, actually was published in a book. Um, it was about uh, women who were involved in the Unleavened Bread Cafe. And it was the 20th year anniversary edition of the book. Um, so th 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 that's where the, the poem is. But even though I had written it way before the book was published, um, it was just the one that I selected for the book. So the name of the poem is Not Tomorrow, But Today. I just want to thank you, God, for all that you do. I don't even have to prove anything to you. You love me just because I am your child. You loved me even when I ran wild. And for all that, I just want to say that I surrender my life to you, not tomorrow, but today. I want your will done in my life. I am tired and will not put up a fight. I seek to do what is good and exceptional in thy sight. God, please help me to live holy and right. I know that I can't, but you can. If I just trust and put my hand in your hand, 
through temptation I can stand. Not just stand, but come out victorious. In the end, when we win, it will be glorious. My life is yours and I will give it to no other. Not even my father, husband, child, or mother. I throw my hands in the air and say, Lord, my life I give to you, not tomorrow, but today. You kept me in times when I should have lost my life. You comforted me when I could not sleep at night. I know that you are real, no matter what others think. In my own sin and destruction, I could have sink. But you held me like a newborn child, whispering in my ear, this will be over in a while. The times when I rebelled and deserved to go to hell, even when I was locked up and thrown into jail, I know it was you that brought me through. Those were the times when I did not know what to do. You knew just what it would take to put on the brakes so that I would not have to pay for my own mistake my way. I could live to try and get it right another day. God, you are my sword, my provider, and my shield. Finally, my father, I want to do only your will. I'll take the first step and walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, today I surrender my whole life without a fight. Yes, to your will and to your way. Believe me when I say my life is yours, not tomorrow, but today. Thank you so much for that, Sister Tawana. I'm telling y'all, y'all are speaking to me today, okay? <laughs> y'all are speaking to me not tomorrow, but today, all right? So I love doing this. This is why I do this, because you never know who you're encouraging. And that definitely was a very encouraging poem. So I thank you so much for delivering that, Sister Tawana, because it was something that I needed to hear, most definitely. You're welcome. God bless. God bless you. And next up, we have Sister Nicole Grant, Freedom Girl. Hello, everyone. Did you just say it like that? Freedom Girl. <laughs> um, the name of my poem is called The Kingdom. <clears throat> the kingdom has risen in me. Now I am free. Free to be. The kingdom has risen in me. Restored me back to the way it was supposed to be. Joy and peace, living absolutely free. The kingdom has risen in me. That place where the two become one, one voice, one sound. Hearing, seeing, and creating. How can two walk together except they agree? The kingdom has risen in me. Walk in and be free. The change of mind, this place where you can be. Growth is inevitable in this place, you see. It's here where you remain loyal to the unknown. Those things you can't see. The kingdom has risen in me. The choice is yours. Love one, hate the other. The kingdom has risen in me. Accept the invitation and join me and be free. The kingdom has risen in me. Never looking back. No longer bound. No longer chained. The kingdom has risen in me. Exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think the kingdom has risen in me the invitation is extended once again for you to be free yeah the kingdom has risen in me free to live abundantly the kingdom is the place to be okay sis the kingdom has risen in you girl thank you so much for that Everybody has such beautiful poetry. I love it. So we have all going for the first round. I don't, I'm not sure if everybody is still here, but we will go one more round. And then after that, I will see if anybody else wants to share anything and anybody has any words of encouragement or anything. So since we are back to me, I have another poem that I'm going to share. It's called Potent mirage and i wrote this poem 
at time at the time where I wrote this poem, I was having trouble with my daddy because I don't know if everybody on here knows, but my daddy has been locked up pretty much all of my life. He's been in and out of prison all of my life. He's been out for a year now. And people in prison tend to make broken promises. So I was with him along the whole 10 year journey that he was in there and he just made me all these promises and he got out and was doing the exact opposite of what he said he would. So it really hurt me to the point where I just had to eliminate him from my life at the time. He is doing better now. He's really attempting to be a better father. But at that moment, it was just so potent, just like the poem is called. It was, it was very hurtful and I just had to, to let it go for the moment. And I know sometimes we have those experiences to where we have to just let people go in order for ourselves not to be hurt. So potent mirage. I shouldn't even be phased. I shouldn't even be scarred. I shouldn't even be swayed by a potent mirage. Your words are as potent as a scorpion's trap. A spell of poisonous hell, my heart under attack. My love was pure as a virgin and I can't take it back. Feelings of hatred, time wasted, has my heart turning black. When the bars opened up, you were declared a free man, but your mind was still confined, lying trapped in the hands of the state of Arizona, gangster persona, street life. About a month, I saw your truth was all lies. You came out my best friend and metamorphed with the wind. Now the mention of your name is a sound I can't stand. You were the apple of my eye. I gazed at you with adoration. And then you made me cry when you transformed into Satan. Your sister passed away and you let, I mean, and left you money from her death. In a matter of five months, you were broke, nothing left. You broke me off a piece out of love to fix my car. The car has since been repaired, but not the damage to my heart. I'm thanking you for the money, but it wasn't worth a dime. My love is not material. All I'm asking for is time. Over the months, you've shown me that I don't mean a thing. I love you are just words to you. You don't know what it means. You break your neck for your homies when they're nothing but phonies. You love these women and these people like it's holy matrimony. 90% of the time, I don't even hear from you. You couldn't deal with half the pain that you've put me through. To love someone so much, you stoop down to their level, only to find that love is blind and you gave your heart to the devil. I'm going to pour all this hurt within this poetic flow because after I'm done, it's time for me to let go. I will no longer let you have a piece of my life. Bad energy has been winning me and now I must die. Remember every time you chose the streets over me? Ever imagine how agonizing that must be? For a baby to adore you and sleep in your bosom and you abandon her to throw up gang signs with the hoodlums. Remember when you come to pick me up and my mom would deny you? Man, that must have been tough. But imagine how much it hurt the little girl that was waiting. All I wanted was my daddy. My heart was decaying. Remember when my mom did let me go with you? Remember the detrimental things that you would do? Driving drunk without a care for your life or mine? Hitting the lady with the broom at McDonald's that time? You drove drunk in, the, in your friend's car, hit a person and bailed. Didn't care about my safety. You just couldn't risk going to jail. Remember hitting your ex-wife in front of my face because you were high? Yeah, that wasn't okay. Remember you choked me for calling the cops, threatened to kill me when you saw me right on the spot? I was terrified of you. When, when I saw you, I cried. When you made those threats, you mental. That one time, you never lied. I never wanted to see or talk to you. I was dying inside. But, but for the sake of Aunt Sharonda, I set my pride aside. I wish from that point on, I would have left you alone. Your words hurt me and broke my bones like the sticks and the stones. 
slowly eating at my flesh like a gun to my chest. Even as an adult, I'll put up with your mess. But at this point, my life's it, but at this point in my life, it's time for me to depart. Stop being fooled by the mirage. My eyes are a door to my heart. Can't handle your level of potency. I'll no longer deal. You show me that you don't give a crap about the pain that I feel. And at this point in my life, it is time for me to heal. And Jesus is the way, so it's time that I kneel. This is my story, and I've lived it, but the chapter is closed. Depart from me, Satan, because you've been exposed. Destroyed myself for far too long, chasing after your love. I'm done falling in and out of love. It's time to give up. Hope Mirage, I love you so much that I'm saying goodbye because I love me too much to keep dying inside. You broke promises like my heart and I'm sure to keep mine because I promise you I'm done and I'm not pressing rewind. Chapter closed. Okay, so next we will have Sonia, once again, Sonia Stuckey. Okay, um, this is a piece that I wrote really for my daughter. And I, I don't know if she's still on, but I'm gonna do this for her. We were having a discussion about all the different things people believe when it comes to Christianity, kind of like pick what kind you want. <laughs> So this is called Selective Christianity. Cherry picking the gospel, perverting God's word, selective salvation in the path was unheard. False teachers arising to scratch itching ears, touting another Jesus to ease godly fear. Salvation ain't selective. We don't get that choice. We must learn to surrender to the sound of God's voice. Selective Christianity, it's not a roll of the dice. Truth is not hate speech. We can't call darkness light. Written and inspired by holy men of all, by way of God's spirit, the scriptures unfold. God breathed and useful for training in righteousness. We must learn to walk in the spirit and crucify the flesh. Salvation ain't selective. We don't get that choice. Gotta learn to surrender at the sound of God's voice. Selective Christianity, not a roll of the dice. Truth is not hate speech, can't call darkness light. In this culture of cancel, this world has achieved, making gross enemies of those who believe. We stand in the fullness of our God's liberty, for it is, only, it is, for it is still only truth that will make a man free. Salvation ain't selective, we don't get that choice. Got to learn to surrender at the sound of God's voice. Selective Christianity, not a roll of the dice. Truth is not hate speech, can't call darkness light. Parameters of salvation have already been defined, blood bought and purchased at the cross when he died. Bible declares him as the way, truth and light. A seeker friendly gospel is just not the cure where hearts remain stagnant and motives impure. Let's welcome a gospel that challenges our fear, breaks through our emotions and the sins we hold dear. Cause our sacred calves to become sacrificed so that we can know freedom and see paradise. Salvation ain't selective. We don't get that choice. Gotta learn to surrender at the sound of God's voice. Selective Christianity, not a roll of the dice. Truth is not hate speech can't call darkness, darkness light. Selective Christianity is a grave mistake. Selective Christianity will leave your soul still at stake. Thank you so much, Sonia, for that. That is especially true in what's going on in the world today. You know, people choose what they want to live by and what they don't. People will say, you know, I'm a Christian or, you know, I love the Lord, but all this bad language and stuff coming out of their mouth in the same sentence. So, you know, we watch the celebrities on TV and stuff say, I want to thank God and we see their life doesn't represent that. So that's, that's very true for what's going on today. And 
with everything that's going on, you know, it's it's very hard for the children because they really need to be protected in these times. There's so much stuff on YouTube, on the television, everywhere. And it's just hard to keep them away from things like that because everywhere you turn is some type of spirit or anything that's trying to pollute these kids' minds. Like my kids be on YouTube trying to watch a simple video, maybe Thomas the Train and Thomas the Train will be cursing and you know, doing all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. It's just crazy what's going on now. But that was an amazing poem because it just makes me think of how people are quick to say, I love the Lord, but their fruits don't show it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You are very welcome. Next up, we have Nocturnal. Hello again. Oh, hey. Um, so I am going to share a new one. I haven't memorized yet, but this is, I guess it's a good opportunity to do it since I can read it. Um, I don't even think I've shared this one with my wife yet. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but so I can read this. I need glasses. <laughs> Let to get a little close. We are all tied together. One big web of invisible strings it's strange how one small tug can change so many things. Ripples that travel like waves through an ocean of molecules in ways that we cannot explain. Particles interacting and reacting in colorful displays. We can only imagine right below the surface of what we can actually see happen. Beyond what meets the eyes, energies and auroras clashing positive and negative reactions, all dependent on our actions. Intended or just by accident, we tend to smash right in as if to mend the aggregate. We spend our energies on enemies trying to defend the embattlement of our memories. Flutter in the wind as if to send us in the direction of new ministries. Clutters of leaves leave the tallest of trees riding the smallest of breeze as if to fall aimlessly. But not all. Some shamelessly cling to the branch, afraid to advance, they stall. In a world so big, it's easy to feel small. So they grab and they claw to prevent the fall with every bit of dying force. But every leaf shall fall from its source eventually, its nature's course intentionally. Then raked and heaping piles, fleetingly we speak denials, believing we're sorted and orderly. Wind shifts and we can't resist forcibly or sordidly to other fields, some greener with more yields, some plots just mud and rocks. We grow, so fear not. Nature has been known to turn a little into a lot. We grow even in the mud, a seed can still sprout. Rout, roots are not stopped by cement. They do not relent. They inch forth, inch by inch, or they find another route. Thank you. Wow, thank you for allowing us to be the first to hear that. That was amazing. That spoke volumes as all your poetry does. You. you have that perfect poetic voice. <laughs> so I thank you even for being here this long because I know that you have an event later on tonight to attend. So you are a busy man today. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually gonna have to probably cut out pretty soon here and still got a lot to do to get ready for it. So. Well, thank you for even tuning in. I appreciate you being here because, you know, that's tiring doing two in a row, but I thank you for being here. Thank you. So, Miss Ashley Speaks, you are next. Alrighty, so this um, second poem I'm going to do is called Shine On. I am in understanding that you get what you give. That there is good and bad in this world. Some days are just hit or miss. I get it, I do. This life is not a fairy tale. No one is coming to save me with a glass shoe. I had a conversation with God and he told me 
if I stopped trying to write my own story, I would stop feeling so misused that he has a plan. Gave me a glimpse of the book he has already written. Now I'm purpose driven. To my journey, I've committed. He's already promised to see me through. Said I'm one of the chosen ones. Don't take my word for it. Be standing here as proof. Let the enemy tell it I shouldn't have made it this far. He has his own agenda too. My divine narrative of overcoming and elevating while taking others along the way is too great, so he raised the stakes. I began to heal from my childhood traumas. Then here he comes around shooting a shot like, um, let's throw a few snakes in the grass. Fire off with some negativity and empty clip with that depression since she thinks she bulletproof. He had me down and out. I mean, down for the count. But before he could ever get to three, I may have been stumbling, but I was on my knees, gaining my strength, replenishing myself off of a mustard seed. And with that, God brought me back to my feet walking tough up in my destiny. Yeah, devil, I know I make you so mad at me. You loved when I allowed you to live up here rent-free, making no more room for your trickery. God's reflection has finally been set free. There was nothing before me, so you still after me. How many times must I say it? You cannot have thee. The light, the voice have both born within. Ain't no stopping me. It's very intentional. Little girl, growing girl, grown woman, even though they had no permission to enter, your body is still a temple. Believe me when I tell you there's so much we can accomplish if we first take care of our mental. Let it go, baby, let it go. You have to do so in order to grow. This is the beginning, nowhere close to the end. Take my words and like air, breathe them in. Let them stick to your skin because I declare right here, right now that everyone attached to me wins. To God be the glory. Amen. I love your delivery as well as was said in the comments. Girl, you be speaking that life, okay? You made me think how the enemy really will try you. Like, when you're in those valleys, that's the beautiful thing about walking with the Lord, though. You may encounter those valleys, but you always get up. So everybody I know goes through their hard times, but the beautiful thing about a person that's serving the Lord, we always get up. We don't ever stay down. So thank you for that, Miss Ashley. Next. Okay, well, next up we have Monifa. Okay, this poem is entitled In the Stillness of the Night. In the stillness of the night, I sometimes encounter the greatest struggles, a mental fight. In my bed, I toss and turn, begging sleep to visit me while in my head thoughts flow like an angry river or a stormy sea. My joy feel like it's drowning. My smile is flooded by tears. In the stillness of the night, I must face some of my greatest fears. Aha, aha, let's flip the switch. In the stillness of the night, I can also hear God speak. It takes less to trust to him, and my life will surely turn around. In the stillness of the night, I can choose to be still or let confusion reign. I'd rather take the former than to this mental anguish surrender. Yes, God doesn't mind if I put him to the test. He is touched by my afflictions, and he loves to give me not just sleep, but rest. In the stillness of the night, God wants to meet with you and me. 
Our troubled hearts he wants to set free. Give us peace and mental authority. When sadness tries to attack, God says he has our backs. Remember the choice is ours to be still and trust or to frown, toss and turn. In the stillness of the night, let's give God our problems. I'm confident that he will solve them. Thank you. Thank you, Monifa. I love that poem. That was beautiful. Thank you. Your poetry is always beautiful. <laughs> Did you ever you. Um, get that book published yet? Or are you still trying to figure it, out what it, it, it is? It's almost there. We're working on some illustrations that we want to put to a few poems. And then it will be out coming soon. Okay. Well, I have to talk to you about those illustrations because I wanted to do like a children's book but I was wondering how to go about it with the illustrations and stuff. So I have to. Okay. Okay. We will. Of course. All right. Uh, next up we have Sister Tawana. Okay. This um, next poem, I don't even recognize this poem. I used to write so many poems to, I didn't, I didn't necessarily plan on writing a poem but it may have just come to me and then I just wrote it and then I'll put it away somewhere with my poem. So I wrote this um, from what I signed on here back in September 7th of 2009. So, and the name of it is called Thankful and Blessed. I thank God for Jesus every day. Father, I thank you in every way. I want to give my life as a reasonable service. I plan to give my all to do this. God has a purpose and a plan. Lord, I thank you for helping me to stand. Father, forgive me when I worry instead of pray. God, with my life, have your way. Yes, you are my guide. Father, help me to swallow my pride. When others don't understand why I am this way, why I am not ashamed when people mistreat me, I love them anyway. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When they ridicule me, you said they ridicule you. You ask, why did you do this to me? And they ask, Lord, when did we do this to you? Your response was, when you did it to the least of my little ones. I love those that hate me and pray for those that despitefully use me. I forgive and forget freely. Father, sometimes I wonder why you made me this way. But when I remember that I'm made in your image, I smile and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. I don't regret the burden of ministry that you call me to do. My heart's biggest desire is to please and serve you. Victory is mine in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your son who freed us. And you said you don't remember when you wrote that poem? I don't remember writing this, but I signed it, so I wrote it. <laughs> amazing, sis, amazing. Sometimes I be in my feelings, and I may be feeling some type of way because of something I may be going through, and, right. and the Lord inspired me to write a poem about it, so I do that, and then, like I said, I just put it away with the rest of my poems, and then I don't necessarily read it because I don't need it for anything, so... And this was back in 2009, so this was 12 years ago. Wow. Right after I got married. <laughs> I got married in 2009, in April. Well, that was a beautiful poem. That's how I am, too. Sometimes I'm going through something, and I'll just write it, and then I'll come across it later, and I'm like, wow, do you remember this? Right, right. 
poems. Yeah, some of my older poems I even put in my book because I was like, wow, this is a good poem. Mm -hmm. So yes, thank you for sharing that. Next we have Freedom Girl, Miss mm -hmm. Nicole Grant. Well, uh, first let me say good job to everybody tonight. Good job. This poem I wrote, um, I come from a place of being, I've been under a lot of leaders. I've been under a lot of pastors. And this poem I wrote kind of goes out to the leaders um, because now I have a phenomenal leader. <laughs> so, you know, this, this poem kind of reaches out to leadership. Why do leaders do what they do? You ever asked yourself that question? You think it's just about preaching a word to you? You got it all wrong. While you're safely asleep, who's up praying strong? When you call, they answer the phone, no matter what they may have going on. Why do leaders do what they do? You ever ask yourself that? If not, then let me help you. Why do they fight so hard for people that won't fight for themselves? You've accepted a lie as a truth. Why do leaders do what they do? You hear the word and you refuse to obey the word. Yes, it's true. The life you live speaks for you. Saturday after Saturday, Sunday after Sunday, Thursday after Thursday, it doesn't matter today. What changes is the, is the voice they hear it from? Good word, pastor. Thank you, pastor. Nothing has changed. We will now pray for the same thing all over again. So you ask yourself just how good was the word? Good enough to destroy yokes? Was the word good enough to make me turn from my wicked ways? Was the word good enough to get me out of his bed and her out of my head? Was it only good for the moment? A temporary fix is what I got. Yeah, good word. I will now leave your church now and go back to my life of fornication. But it was a good word. I'll go back to my life of adultery. But it was a good word. I know it's an abomination. I know, I know, be encouraged, Pastor. But how can I be when I see the very soul entrusted to me crying out in pain, there is no gain. How can I be encouraged when all I see is a struggle and the pain? Tell me, how can I be? Why do leaders do what they do? You still, you will answer when I call, no matter what you have going on. Yeah, you give when I need, no matter what the case may be. You'll pray no matter what I say. Why do leaders do what they do? They give more than they receive. They make sacrifices for people that won't even do. Why do leaders do what they do. Yeshua did the same. He took the blame. Innocent he was. And all we can say is good word, Yeshua. You took on my punishment. Good word, Yeshua. Beaten, denied by one who said, I am with you until the end. Betrayed by one of your own, yet you continue to press on. You taught and walked. Yes, you kept going on. We never get it. How long must I be with you until you get it? The greater good is what you saw. A people lost, a people defeated it, but you saw the need. Why do leaders do what they do? They have the heart of their leader, Yeshua. They won't give up. They won't walk away. Tears in their eyes. They will continue to pray. This is why leaders do what they do. Girl, that a good you speaking and stuff. <laughs> well, Pastor is my first pastor, actually, because I used to have a mistrust when it came to pastors. I couldn't just put my heart into a pastor. So, of course, I visited a lot of churches and I would hear the words and it'd be that feel good word. You know, you leave and you're feeling good and you're like, oh, yes, feeling powerful. But one thing we've learned is with those feel good messages, they don't last too long because you'll feel good at that moment. But then you go home and you face with all this stuff and you back down. So with the pastor I have, he is an amazing pastor. And I wouldn't trade them for anything in this world. So, Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sis. All right. Well, we have gone through all of our poets. I just want to see if anybody has any comments, any words of encouragement, anything that they want to say. I just want to say thank you for inviting me to share what God gives to me um, in poem. Um, I don't use my poems for much. I usually just write them and tuck them away in a book somewhere. So to be able to share them with people and especially uh, like-minded people like me 
who um, have a love for poetry and are able to express themselves through words, um, it, it's an honor. And um, I've always uh, not wanted to do it in a in an actual um, poetry slam, as far as you know, physically being there. But it's easier to do it this way and to be able to share it with people all over the country through Zoom. I I just thank God for that, and I thank God for you. I thank God for everything that you go through and you do to make this happen. I know that it's not always easy, but um, God bless you and God bless each and every poet tonight. Um, I enjoy everything that I heard, everything. Well, God bless you too, Sister Tawana. And yeah, you know, it's it's not easy. <laughs> I mean, especially for me because my husband knows I'm not really a person that comfortable with speaking in front of an audience I've done poetry slams and stuff like that but you know we we've been going through a pandemic you get a little rusty and that's been me I've been I've been feeling like I kind of lost my touch a little bit so this zoom has been a place for me to express myself and still tell what I'm going through or tell what's on my mind and you know have like-minded individuals listening people that have a love of poetry people have a love for expressing themselves and it's comfortable, you know, it, it's comfortable for everybody. We're at the comfort of our own homes. We're able to share our feelings, no judgment. So I love this too. And I thank you so much, Sister Tawana, for being here because all of your poems are always so encouraging and uplifting. You're welcome. Anyone else? I just want to thank everyone, every poet that spoke today. When God, like myself, when God gives you something, he doesn't give it for you to hold on to it. You know, he gives it to you to release. So I just thank everyone for their obedience. I thank everyone that I was able to get fed today. And I just thank you for this opportunity for even, you know, asking me and for your obedience as well. And I just want to encourage you to keep pressing forward with the vision that God has given you. Um, soon enough, I, I see it being an in-person thing. This was great for the times that we're in. And I'm so happy that it worked out this way and that I was able to join. And, you know, the people that you chose were the people that, you know, were able to join. But I definitely see, you know, the in-person soon. I see the third and the fourth and the fifth. So just keep going. And, Whenever you're feeling discouraged, just, just know that God is doing great things for you, okay? God bless you. Oh, thank you, Ashley Speaks. God bless you as well. You always have the right words, girl. Even when I was talking to you through Instagram, you gave me those uplifting words because I really was nervous. But I thank you so much for being here. You are such a light. And even with that baby that you just had, you still managed to make it here. Her baby been quiet. Is the baby home? She, she sleep. She, I put her to sleep just before. That's why I was on here about 403, 404. <laughs> I wanted, I actually, I, I wanted to tell you like I, 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 your presence. It's something about your presence as well. You can tell that even through your per poetry that you articulate your heart. And I'm so grateful for that. So keep being you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I do. I, you know, I put my, my heart into my poetry. That's, I try to relate to people. You know, I, I tell people like, I'm a real person. I go through things and I want people to be able to express themselves and what they go through as well and not trying to, you know, hide. So it's get it out. Shoot. Sometimes I need to let it out. And some, sometimes this is the best way. Like I, that's, just, that's mainly what I do when I write my poetry. I express myself. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you see that. And thank you once again for being here because I loved your poetry. Thank, thank you for everybody for being here. Y'all all blessed to me. Y'all made this happen, mm -hmm. even for the audience members and the people that listen. Um, thank you for being here. I don't know if anybody else wants to share anything, Darren. I can't hear you in the Zoom. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah, say it again. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, no, I was just, it, it, it was just everything that was spoken was meant. You know, everything that was spoken in, it's as if we all know that God is omnipresent. You know, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere at once. And we know that he was here up on tonight and he dealt with me. And I know he dealt with a lot of, he dealt with every one of us. He dealt with every speaker up on tonight. And I'm just so blown away by all the I am's, all the, the kings and queens that spoke up on tonight because it was him that was speaking through each and every one of you. And everything that was spoken from each and every one was spoken to me directly. And it's, it's times where God will use certain people to speak to certain individuals. And God has been doing a lot of speaking to me from a lot of individuals. But up on tonight, God spoke loud and clear. And as you all was speaking, he was speaking to me. And it's, it's such a powerful thing when God can use one individual to bring so many together, right? It's such a powerful thing when people show up not knowing that they're going to speak for God on behalf of God. And I just want to say, when it came to Freedom Talk, Sister Nicole, like, oh my gosh. Like, oh my gosh, that was all, that was all, all him, none of you. Sister Ashley, when you spoke, it was just like, where's your book at? I'm on my way. Let me get that, please, right now. And Sister Tawana, you always come with the truth. Sister Tawana always comes with the truth. And then it was another um, another woman that spoke too. Um, it was so many. And then Nocturnal, like, man, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. Like I said, when we all can come together as one, united, and allow the king to use us to speak to one another, because that's all this was tonight. And I have nothing to share but that, you know, but I was here. I was fully here. And I was like, wow, look at all of I am, all the king. He, all he doing is speaking to me back to back to back to back. And I'm like, keep going. But he's like, enough. You get the point. So I thank you all once again, everybody that showed up and everybody that just showed out and allowed the Lord to use them. Well, thank you so much, Minister Darren, or husband. <laughs> thank you for speaking your thoughts. You always have something encouraging to say. The Lord be using you, because when you speak, you speak volumes. So I thank you for that. But I don't know if anybody has anything else to say as far as keeping in touch with each other. I believe everybody put their information in the chat. Um, I don't know. Sometimes you have an option to save the chat. I'm on my phone, so it doesn't give that option. But uh, before we depart, make sure to screenshot. I definitely will because I want to keep in touch with everybody. So let me make sure I get my screenshots in so I can support everybody on here. This chat was popping today, I see. I couldn't keep going through it because I was recording. So it's going to show that on the recording. But thank y'all for being here. I really do appreciate it. Thank y'all for uh, supporting my vision and just being the lovely individuals that you are. I believe I screenshotted everything. Sister Nicole, did you raise your hand? I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I do. I want to. I did put it in the chat, but I really want to thank you for your vision, for how you bring artists together, continue to allow the Father to use you to do that, um, and to every artist. We're all artists in our own right. So to every artist, continue to express yourself, because an expression of what we went through is helping somebody else. When we speak, we're helping somebody else. We have gone through it. We have written it. We have expressed what we have dealt with. And guess what? We're letting everybody else know, man, you can handle this. You can go through this. I especially want to tell Miss Ashley speak. Girl, keep doing what you do. Book Please. number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. Continue doing what you do because you do have something to say. And the father is going to use you to begin to destroy yokes. Your voice destroys yokes. So continue to do what you're doing because God is truly getting ready to use you in this hour. I didn't want to say all that, but I had to tell you that 
I had to tell you to continue to allow him to use you because there are great things and your voice is powerful and people don't know your story. But if you keep writing it, they'll understand it better by and by. They look at you and see you're blessed, but they don't know what you went through to get to where you are. And you tell it when you write, and if we would just listen, we can hear it. As opposed to every artist on this line, if we would just listen, our stories unfold in front of everybody. So thank you, Beauty and Bard, my sister. Thank you, because you brought this all together. You brought us all together as you did the first time. This is the second time. I'm waiting on the third time. To I don't always have to perform, but I always want to be in the number. Okay. Thank you, Sister Nicole. Thank you for everybody once again, like I said, for being here. Oh, and girls, I say you raised your hand again. It's good. That hand is still there. Oh, I have to lower it, I guess. I've seen lower hands. There we go. But yes, thank you all once again for being here. As I stated, everybody. Like y'all poetry all spoke volumes. Miss Ashley speaks. I'm so happy to have you on here because like I said, your poetry really spoke to me, especially what I've been going through lately. I've uh, mm -hmm. been feeling like I'm going through the valleys at this moment at this time. I think it's more just being overwhelmed in the house with the kids, but you know, it feels feels very low at times. So I thank you for being here. And I think, I mean, I thank God for me being obedient, even when I felt like, you know what, I don't want to do this. It was times where I felt like canceling it. But of course, you know, when you're doing something for the Lord, you have to do it no matter how you feel, because you never know who needs to hear what you have to say. So thank you, ladies, gentlemen. Um, if there's no further words, we can now dismiss. And mm -hmm. I will, uh, of course, keep you updated on when I'll do the next one there will be a next one. So I keep y'all updated on that. If you guys have any events or anything, please let me know because I would love to be in attendance as well. I am about to dismiss. Everybody have a great day. You too. Thank you. I know that you love me, so I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Say but not soft, you get that understood. Uh. God got me doing things I never would.